Hey everyone, TPS Miner here. Welcome back to the TPS Miner channel. Today is January 1st, 2022, so happy new year. Hope everyone had a great New Year's Eve last night. Woke up this morning invigorated, excited about uh, rolling into 2022. I know I sure did. Uh, I set a couple of New Year's resolutions for myself. The first one is really to improve the quality of the content that we're bringing to this channel. Uh, I've been so fortunate to have so many of you uh, come here and watch these videos, subscribe to the channel, and I want to make a commitment to you all to improve the content that, uh, that I'm providing to you. So uh, the second resolution I made for myself is to expand my crypto portfolio a bit, uh, look at some other projects, other algorithms to mine. Uh, you know, we're looking at the merge coming potentially sometime later this year. And I really want to make sure that I'm in a position to be prepared for when that happens. So I did a video recently on the efficiency cost of mining. And of course, with the 3060 LHR card being limited on Ethereum, that was a prime candidate for me to start looking at other things to mine with it. So uh, we went ahead and started testing and my testing with Flux uh, yielded some pretty good results. So I want to share those with you today. Uh, you can see since early November, there has been, uh, there was a dip in the price of, of Flux. It's been slowly climbing ever since. Uh, today is a bit of a down day, about 3% down at a uh, price of $2.36. But again, a general upward trend since early November. This is not financial advice. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen to the price of Flux in the coming days or weeks or months. Uh, just noting a trend of an upward trend over the past few months. Again, these videos are for entertainment purposes and informational purposes only. Uh, if you do want to get into mining or if you want to get into mining flux, please do your own research before you jump in. Okay, so uh, if you do decide that you want to mine flux, the first thing you're going to need to do is get a wallet. So Zelcore.io is the uh, website for the Zelcore wallet. So this is going to be your Flux wallet. Uh, I'm not going to walk through a video today on setting up the Zelcore wallet. I will do a video in the future if there is some interest. So please let me know in the comments below if this is something you're interested in. I will be happy to do a video on setting up a Zelcore wallet. But uh, you'll need this wallet to set up your receiving address for your Flux. Okay, so let's look at HiveOS. This video, I am gonna focus in on HiveOS for the setup for Mining Flux, but I will add a few additional comments if you are setting this up in Windows. So you can see on my Vader rig, I do have this split between uh, Ethereum and Flux. So I'm mining Ethereum with T-Rex and Flux with Mini-Z. Let's go ahead and take a look at the flight sheet and see how we have this set up. So uh, if we click on these three dots, and click edit. You can see that I do have the flight sheet split and I did that by selecting add miner. So our Ethereum miner is using T-Rex and Flux, uh, we are using Mini Z. So there is a limitation within Hive OS, of course, that you can't use two uh, of the same miner. So you can't mine ETH with T-Rex and also Flux with T-Rex. So you need to have two different miners set up. So once we hit add miner, we come over here, we select the coin we want, which is Flux, the wallet. If you don't have your Flux wallet set up in Hive OS, at this point you can click on add wallet and this will pop open the information for adding a new wallet. You'll select the Flux coin. You'll enter in your address, the receiving address from the Zelcore wallet that you had set up in the previous step. You can give it a name and save it as a global wallet. And what that does is it uh, becomes applicable in all available farms uh, for that particular coin. So uh, once that's done, you hit create and then you will have your wallet. So from there, you'll select from the dropdown your newly created Flux wallet. The miner pool, I use minerpool.org for Flux. And the reason I do that, let's go ahead and look at the available pools. There's a lot of available pools here for Flux. Uh, whichever pool you choose, make sure they pay out parallel assets. That is the most important thing. And um, a lot of these do. 
Some of them may not. I don't know. I haven't done research on all of the available pools. Uh, I chose minorpool.org. Again, uh, one of the most popular pools, and they do pay parallel assets. So what's important here, if you look at what to mine uh, and you look at Flux, there is the information button under estimated rewards. And if you hover over that information bubble, you'll see here bonus rewards included by default. So I pointed out the parallel assets element of the mining pool because what to mine assumes that you are mining to a pool that does pay parallel assets. So if you are mining to a pool that does not pay parallel assets, the numbers in what to mine will not be accurate. So the, uh, the parallel assets end up representing a very large increase in the value of what you are mining. And we'll get to that when we go ahead and look at the minor, minor pool website. Okay, so we've got our wallet set up. We've got our miner set up. Uh, the last thing we need to do, we need to select the miner. So uh, for Flux, I'm using Mini Z because I can't use T-Rex miner. Mini Z is one of the best miners for Flux. So again, uh, recommend using Mini Z. So once you've selected your miner, you need to go into the setup miner config. If you are mining with multiple GPUs on a single rig and not all of them are being configured to mine flux, you need to differentiate between those devices. So under your extra config arguments, if you hover over the information bubble, you see for mini Z, there is an argument that you can add dash CD space and then a list of space separated device IDs. Those device IDs are the IDs of the GPU as they sit in your rig. So for me, the 3060 LHR is device ID zero. So you'll see that I added a, an argument dash CD space zero. So what this will do is it will specify to the algorithm that it should only be using device ID zero. Once you've got that set up, apply your changes. I've already got it set up, so I'm gonna cancel. And similarly, you'll need to go up into your uh, second miner and set up a similar argument. And for T-Rex, it's devices. And in my case, the remaining devices are one, two, three, four, and five. These are comma separated. And this will specify that devices one through five in my rig should be mining Ethereum. Again, once you've added this extra argument, apply changes. I've already got this set up, so I'm just gonna cancel and then update your flight sheet and it will apply all of the settings that we've just set up. If you're setting this up for the first time, once you create and save your flight sheet, you can just hit the rocket and this will launch your flight sheet and apply it to the worker that you've got selected. Okay, so let's jump back here into the overview. So I have my uh, 3060 LHR already pre-configured for mining after uh, doing all of my testing. The settings that I'm using are a core of plus 150, a memory of 2600, and a power limit of 125. Now, if these are the settings that I'm using in Hive OS, if you are using Windows, these will be a core of plus 150, a memory of plus 1300. So in the Linux Hive OS system, it uh, requires you to double the memory. So again, in Windows, you're gonna take half of this. So your memory overclock in Windows is going to be 1300. The power limit in Hive OS is a uh, number in watts. So what we're doing here is applying a power limit of 125 watts. If you're doing this in Windows, you're using MSI Afterburner, you're gonna set your power limit to approximately 67%. So your total power is 187 watts. 67% of that is approximately 125 watts. Uh, I do have a video on overclocking using MSI Afterburner. I'll put a link to that in the card. Uh, go ahead and check that out if you need some help on overclocking in Windows using MSI Afterburner. Okay, so what these settings are doing, we're getting roughly 40.5 solutions per second. And I'm gonna hop over to the minor pool site, and we'll take a look at this um, this setup in the pool. So 
Uh, I have been doing some tinkering this morning, so you'll see my numbers uh, at the pool are all over the place. If we look back over the course of a week, I did have this set up mining flux most of the day yesterday. And you can see we stabilized roughly around that 40 to 42 solutions per second average uh, with some, some rather large fluctuations over time. But really, we're, we're zeroing in roughly at that 40 to 41 solutions per second at 125 watts. So uh, where I had mentioned here about the rewards, what I like about minerpool.org and other sites may be, may be similar, but this breaks it down and shows you your estimated rewards for mining. Uh, we're about 0 0.6 coins per day or $1.40 USD. And then our estimated parallel assets are an additional 0 0.23 coins or roughly uh, 54 uh, cents USD per day for a total of about $1.94 uh, per day. Now, again, we haven't been mining for a full 24 hours, so these numbers will continue to fluctuate until everything stabilizes. But let's hop over to what to mine and see what what to mine says. So I put in the numbers here uh, for what I was getting for Ethereum. I was at about 36 mega hash per second at 110 watts. And then for Flux, I've put in 41.18. This was just a snapshot in time when I had a stable setup at 125 watts. And let's calculate those and see what we get. So right now we're getting, uh, for Ethereum, our profit before electricity would be about $2.06. And our after um, electricity is about $1.77. For Flux right now, uh, we're at about $1.98 per day with our parallel assets and after electricity, $1.65. So not quite as profitable currently as Ethereum, but if we look at our profitability and we look at our little grid here, we've got current in the upper left, 24 hours in the upper right, three days in the lower left, seven days in the lower right. You can see currently and over the past 24 hours, Flux is less profitable than Ethereum. But over the past three days and the past seven days, it has been more profitable than Ethereum. So again, uh, just something to consider when you're making the decision. Do you want to mine Ethereum? Do you want to want mine Flux with this 3060 LHR? Um, again, not financial advice. Please do your own research before making any decisions about whether to mine at all. And if you are mining, what to mine. Okay. Uh, that is about all I wanted to discuss today. I really appreciate you all taking the time to watch this video. I hope this was informative. Uh, I hope you learned something. If you did, please hit that like button. Give us that thumbs up. And please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. And hope you all have a great rest of your day. And we'll talk to you again real soon.